Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I finally got my hands on the Smart Floodlight, which integrates with Unify Protect. I want to thank Ubiquity for sending this to me to do a video on. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. The Smart Floodlight's been out for quite a while in the USA and just became available in Canada last week. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. And this is the Unify Protect. And as always, Ubiquity has done a great job on the packaging. Let's open it up. So the first thing inside the packaging, we have our Unify Smart Flood Light. And on the inside, we could see the LEDs. It looks like we could take this cover off as well. And then beside that, we have the mounting bracket, which comes with the level. On the back of the smart floodlight, we could see that we have our ethernet and it's powered by PoE in at 802.3 AF. It also looks like they give us a different cover. So this is a white cover instead of the clear cover that comes originally attached to the smart floodlight. We have the quick start guide and we could scan the QR code to get it started. We have a flat mounted bracket and then we have our accessories inside. So we have some screws and anchors. And that's all that comes with the Unify Smart Floodlight. So let's go back to the computer and look over some of the specs. So that was the Unify Smart Floodlight, and I really like the look of it. I also like that they give you two different style of covers. The Unify Smart Floodlight has integrated motion and light sensors for flood light control and management. It detects motion at up to five meters. It provides 550 lumen of intense LED light and is powered by 802.3 AF PoE. It also comes with the durable IPX5 weatherproof housing. And what does that mean? Well, our IPX rating for IPX5 is protect against low pressure water stream from any angle. And this is also easy to manage in your Unify Protect, going to show up like any other accessory or camera and we'll just adopt it into our controller. The smart floodlight comes in at $123 MSRP Canadian. I'm gonna be putting this in my backyard in my left-hand corner. I do have a switch flex utility box and a flex switch in there that will be powering the smart floodlight. So I'm gonna get it mounted and then we'll get it adopted into our controller. Okay, now the Unify floodlight is mounted onto the back of my fence, we need to adopt it into our Unify Protect controller. But the first thing we need to do, we need to tag the switch port that the floodlight is plugged into to be on my camera network. So the floodlight is on my backyard switch, we'll click on it. And we could see that it's on port two. The ethernet interface of this is only 100 megabits per second. So I'll click on port two, and then we'll click the edit pencil. From here, I'll switch the switch port profile to be on my Mac Telecom camera and then press apply. To speed things up a bit, I'm gonna power cycle the port. And once it comes back up, we should be able to adopt it into my UNVR Pro. Port is now up and it's getting 1.3 watts of power. So let's go over to my UNVR Pro. On the device tab, we can't see the floodlight yet. So I'm gonna click add devices. Now we can see the floodlight is ready to be adopted. The default name is floodlight and I'll leave it at that and we'll press add devices. On the next step, it says camera pairing. You can view both devices together on the homepage and access floodlight functionality while viewing the camera. And then you could select no cameras at all, or you could select a camera that's near the floodlight. I'm gonna select my backyard camera, and then we'll press next. And then we have a motion detection area. Consider that the floodlight will detect motion in the area shown and triggered on for the events when it's dark. So we have an auto shut off timer at 15 seconds, or we could have it at 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes. And I'll leave it at 15 seconds and we'll press next. And now we could set a light schedule so we could schedule your floodlight to turn on or off automatically. Set when and how your floodlight is activated. So we have on motion, which is triggered, and then we have when dark and it's always on, or we have manual. I'm gonna leave mine on motion. And then we could select our motion sensitivity. I'll leave it at the default of 88% and press next. Now we can see the floodlight in our UNVR and it's updating. Once it's done updating, we'll check out some of the settings. The floodlight has finished updating, so let's click on it. And here we could see an overview. We could see that the floodlight is currently turned off. If we wanted to manually turn that on, we could just hit the toggle switch and it will turn the light on. 
And then we have brightness settings. Right now it's about medium setting. I'm gonna turn it to the brightest lighting. And we could see that it's paired with my backyard camera. Below that, we could see the model, which is the floodlight. We could see the firmware's up to date and then the uptime. We could also see the name, the status, the MAC address, the IP address, and the connection. It's at 100 megabits per second. Now looking at the settings, we could change the name of the floodlight and we could turn the status LED on or off. We could also change which camera it's paired to. Under lighting, this is where we would set if we want it to be on motion or to be always on. And then we could click locate. If we click locate, it will flash on and off an LED light. We also have reboot and unmanage. So the next thing we need to do, we need to wait until it gets dark outside and then we'll test to see how bright the floodlight actually is. All right, it's about seven o'clock at night and we could see that the floodlight isn't on as I'm not moving, but we'll move and it should turn on. And there we go. And that's actually pretty bright. Um, if I had it in the corner, it might be a little brighter, but we can change the brightness up and down. I believe that is at full right now. So I'm pretty happy with how that is. I don't really need it in my backyard, but it would be good on the side of my house. We could also control it with our phone app, which I will show you when we go back inside. So now we've seen what the floodlight looks in the dark and it's pretty bright and I'm happy with it. I did change the lens, but it didn't really make much of a difference on camera, so I didn't show that. But what we'll show now is what we could do with the Unify Protect app. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we could see devices and then floodlight. So we could power on and off the floodlight. And then we could change the brightness of the floodlight from our Unify Protect app. Right now it's to the brightest it could be, but we could set it to any brightness we would like and turn it right down or turn it off. We could also change the settings, the name, the connection and check about. And then we could take a look at our light schedule. And this is the same as what we would do in the web GUI. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the floodlight. At first, I thought it was a little pricey. It's $123 MSRP Canadian, but after looking at other floodlights on Amazon, it compares to the rest. One thing I wish they added was a weather grommet to the back where we're plugging our ethernet cable in. But other than that, I really like this floodlight. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.